All right, welcome back to Crew Call with the Scooters. As you see, I am flying solo today. Um, but my guest, our guest, is uh, Miss Nancy Mosser, who is the casting director in Pittsburgh and has been in the business. I'm going to have her talk a little bit, but has uh, done everything from The Dark Knight Rises to Perks of Being a Wallflower. She goes back. She knows everything. So we're so happy to have you here, Nancy. Thank you so much. Hi, Courtney. It's great um, to be here in my living room with you. I know. It's good to see a friendly face during this time. So yeah. why don't you, before we start, why don't you give a little background on what you do, um, how long you've done it, things like that. Well, I've been in casting since 1990. Um, before that, I worked in production in Pittsburgh. I went to Penn State in production and I minored in theater. And then I got my first job at Channel 11 in Pittsburgh. I worked for Mr. Rogers. I did freelance work um, at a company called TPC in Swickley, where I met a lot of directors and assistant directors and friends of mine that are now my clients um, way back then. And I just kept exploring. I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I know that I, I knew that I liked production, but I, I hadn't found my niche yet. Right. And then luckily in 1990, um, there was a film here for HBO called Criminal Justice, and they were looking for an extras casting person. And I just knew I'd be really good at it, but I had to convince them. So I did like three or four interviews with them and just convinced them that I would devote my life to their film. And I did, and they liked my work, and I just loved it. So from then on, I just concentrated in casting and... I started doing speaking roles mm -hmm. and commercials and movies, and then that's what I've been doing ever since. And just for anyone who might not know, and also I was able to work with Nancy at Monster Casting for I think over four years as a freelancer, so I've seen firsthand the work that they do there, so um, yeah. always good, always good. Um, for people, I want to go into the different areas of the casting, but for extras casting, for people who might not know, what does that mean? extras casting and how can other people maybe become an extra or um what it means is that all the people in the background of the film sometimes in the foreground but they don't speak so anybody that doesn't speak in a film or a tv show are considered um, background artists or extras and they create the scene um they help create the mood of the scene and make it real okay and i think it's a really important um aspect of the business and it's sort of like a set designer, set decorator, but we paint with people. And, uh, and if, you know, it's a really fun thing to do, especially for people that enjoy being around other people, enjoy talking to other people, really enjoy being part of the business. Um, you don't have to have any experience. So it's really nice for people that, you know, want to be involved, but they don't have a lot of training or experience. And then they could just be an extra. And then some people, you know, become stand-ins and then mm. some people end up, I've had people that were extras that ended up being on the crew after that because they talked to crew people while they were on set and they went on to work in the business after that. So that's what it is. And, you know, our job is to make sure that we have people there, make sure we tell people where to go, what to wear, what to bring with them to get paid and those kinds of things. And, um, you know, if someone says create a scene that looks like a blue collar diner, and that's our job to find people that fit that part. Wow, so really, that's what extra yeah. casting is. You really build the scene. And uh, I know Jenny would want me to ask, because she you know, wants to become famous too. So how, how would I, how would I uh, if I wanted to become an extra or get involved, like how would I do that? Well, with us, all you do is sign up on our website. Um, it used to be where we had to sign up people in person, which I sort of miss in a lot of ways. But now people can sign up from wherever they are. Okay. Um, and they just go to our website, monstercasting.com, talent registration. They just fill out a basic profile, upload a couple of recent snapshots, and then they will get emails from us when, there's, uh, when there are job opportunities. Um, we also have a Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, where people can look and uh, check out opportunities every day. We try to keep that, you know, opportunities posted. And... Um, we also do open calls when there's movies mm -hmm. that come to town. Our most recent one was Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, 
we literally had thousands of people come wow. to our open call on a beautiful sunny Saturday. Um, we finally had to stop seeing people because we had a certain time that we were allowed to be in the venue and um, we had to sort of put an end to it and then encourage people to sign up online. At one point, I was literally outside taking pictures of people and signing them up because I didn't want to send anybody home. Right. And so that's how I was able to get everybody in and it wanted to be. So um, that's another way to get involved is come in person and meet the uh, casting people that way. That's, that's great. And so I know, I do you want to talk a little bit about what's going on during this time? Um, you know, you work with in film production, commercial production. Is everything stopped? How are, like, what's going on? What have you heard or? Right. Um, well, we had a really busy February and March, luckily, and we had um, some projects auditioning the week of March 9th. Uh, we had, I had an audition of 100 people on the 10th. On Thursday, I had a call back with producers, uh, two of which were in the room, it was for a commercial. Two people were in the room and three people Skyped in because wow. they did not want to fly. They were from other cities and they did not want to fly. So that was sort of the time where we, everyone was sort of like, you know, this, we need to take all this seriously and how to figure out how to do it. Um, we made sure everything was disinfected and we, you know, people weren't shaking hands and those kinds of things. But I don't know if you remember, but that's the week where everything just came to a screeching halt. Mm -hmm. So Friday the 13th, ironically, right. it was my last time in the office. And then from then on, we've been working from home. Um, uh, we had a couple commercials that pushed okay uh, they're still pushing they pushed again um they were hoping to shoot in april they just pushed again so that um that has been tough we had another project that was shooting that weekend in pittsburgh and harrisburg mm -hmm. and they got it done because it was all being shot outside so they were able wow. to get it done however the night before filming on sunday the 15th i was having extras that were you know nervous about working even outside and they canceled, so I was replacing people at like 10 o'clock at night on a Saturday night for the shoot in Harrisburg. So, um, but they got that done. I was really happy about that. Um, but everything else has come to a halt. I know there are you know, movies and TV shows that were supposed to start prepping or were prepping and had to stop. So there really isn't any work at when, when people have to shoot in person. Okay. But we have had a couple projects come through where people could send in self-tapes to audition mm -hmm. and the actual work was through self-taping so that has been um you know some a little project that we had but other than that it's you know everything's sort of coming to a halt or we're sort of prepping something that's going to shoot sometime okay in the future, but we don't know when so we just have to say sometime you know because everyone knows mm -hmm. that this is something that's um undefinable at this point so now, have you, have you had to reach out to certain other clients about anything or, or fill them in on what your, the process is or have, like, you know, talent reached out to you about, like, what the status of the industry is and how do you manage that? Because you deal with both. You deal with the talent side and the, and the you know, background extras and you deal with the client side for filming and um, right. commercials. So how has that communication been? Um, the clients or clients are keeping in touch with us about projects that are on hold. Okay. Uh, yesterday we got an email from someone saying, okay, we have to push again our shoot. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to, you know, hope for May. So please let the actors know and the agents know that we're looking at this week and hopefully that'll happen, but you know, we don't know. Right. Um, so it's that kind of communication. Everybody's being incredibly kind and supportive and, you know, I hope you're well, I hope you're okay, stay well, and those okay. kinds of things. I've had actors reached out that are worried about us. Oh, that's, that um, was an essay, yeah. Yeah, and also worried about the business, of course. Um, I have, we're, we've been working on trying to do um, get-together workshops that are, you know, on Zoom, uh, like this is, mm -hmm. and um, other ways to communicate with people and keep things going. We also had a contest on our Facebook page, yeah. which was uh, pick your favorite monologue from a movie, um, record it, and then post it. And then we, we are sending people feedback on, you know, their self tapes, to how, you know, how they can improve the, the actual reading, um, how they can improve lighting or sound and those kinds of things. Um, 
Oh, I love that. Are becoming really important anyway. So it's a really right. good time to say, okay, this is, this is how you can do better. This is how you can make sure there's good lighting. This is how we can make sure we see you. Right. Um, those kinds of things. So we sort of have used that to, um, you know, help keep people busy during the time, but also they can learn something new at the same time. And as a, I love that. I think that's in a way to like keep people, keep people engaged and also learn something. So that's, that's great. Right. And as a business owner, are you able to like take advantage or apply for any of like the loans or anything like that? Have you gotten to that point where you guys need to like look at other resources or? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we, we, um, yeah. we are definitely at that point. It's ama amazing how quickly it happens. Um, right. Uh, we, I actually, after I talk to you, I am going to watch a seminar, a live seminar from some financial planners who are studying all the different opportunities for small businesses yes. and getting loans and grants and um, also the Payroll Protection Act, yes. you know, to help keep your employees and what you can do to get that money as quickly as possible. A lot of things aren't quite available yet, but, um, you know, I'm doing a lot of research so I can sort of get that as soon as possible. I understand. Um, so there are a lot of people are reaching out that way to sort of help each other. Um, and then the, the new self-employed people that are self-employed being el eligible for unemployment. That's something I don't think is, I've ever seen. No, so, which is great for this film industry, too. which is great for the film industry. It's like so many people. Yes. On. And, um, but I'm also sharing that with my freelancers because they're all self-employed and I want to, you know, help them during this time. Um, I've made sure that everyone gets paid immediately. I'm not waiting to pay people until I get paid because I know that they're, you know, really hurting. And so that's something that I can do. That's great. And what are you doing besides, you know, staying in, are you doing anything fun? Are you getting outside, walking the dog or cooking? Um, Yes, we are. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny. A few weeks ago, about a week ago, we went to North Park because it was, a, I think that's really sunny Sunday that we had. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's last Sunday or the Sunday before. And um, there were so many people there that I've never seen it so packed. It was literally like there was an event or a marathon or something going on. And it was just freaky. I was like, I said to my husband, I think, I think we should go down into the woods with, we have a golden retriever named Henry. He just turned one. Yes. Um, and we took him down into the woods, but there were so pe many people in the woods too, that we waited, we stayed like five minutes and then got back in the car because I really mm -hmm. didn't feel like that we were social distancing enough. Um, so what we've been doing is going to other neighborhoods around us and parking the car and just walking mm -hmm. the dog and exploring other neighborhoods. Um, it's really funny how I don't even remember that I can just take a drive. I know. I'm not even doing that, which is weird, but um, I, I, my, some of my neighbors haven't even left the neighborhood. <laughs> they haven't even taken a drive mm -hmm. and we're trying to encourage people to do that, but um, I think everyone just feels safer at home. I agree with you. And I think, everyone watching would be very upset if I didn't ask, since you mentioned that you worked with Mr. Rogers early yes. on in your career. If, how was that experience? What did you do? And what, do you have any stories you want to share? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, it was my second job. My first job was at Channel 11. And the producers, I worked with a producer who was married to the director, Mr. Rogers. Mm. And they needed a production assistant. And um, so they invited me to come over there. And um, they only produce 15 shows a year, which a lot of people I don't think realize because there's so many reruns. Um, so the pace was a lot slower. Um, and then in between, there'd be six weeks or so where they would lay off all their employees, speaking of layoffs, mm -hmm. in between shows. So the pace was different and something that I had to get used to. But my job, one of my jobs was that I was in charge of his sweaters, Mr. Rogers sweaters. Wait, that's the best <laughs> and, job. Um, one time after we were filming, uh, one of the uh, crew members put the, his Kelly green sweater into a bench, the piano bench, Johnny Costa's piano bench, and no one could find his sweater. And there was a big like to do about it. And then finally they found it in there and I was like in trouble because I couldn't find the sweater. <laughs> um, and so that was one of the things I did. I also did research for them for their little on location segments. Great. Uh, I remember I had to reach, research different types of gold because they did a segment on gold and mm -hmm. rose gold and yellow gold and white gold. And I learned all about that. And then um, 
Also, I drove Mr. Rogers to the PAA club. Oh, he really? swam every day. Wow. Um, even during filming, the, he insisted that he made sure he swam. Uh, I would bring a salad for him that he would eat after he swam. And the first time I drove him, I was so nervous because it's like, you know, he's like a celebrity, you know, it's like a big deal. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Mr. Rogers. So we were talking and I, um, I went right by the PAA club and missed it. And I was like, and he's like, oh, Nancy, uh, I think it, I think we missed it. I said, oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Rogers. Yeah. And he said, that's all right, Nancy. We'll just go around in a circle. Oh, that was so sweet. <laughs> he goes, we'll go around in a circle. So we went around the um, Cathedral of Learning, around the block in a circle, and I dropped them off. But uh, that was my Mr. Rogers story. And, and you know what? It was so amazing because even after I left the show and moved on to other things, it was on my resume. And every interview I ever had, they said, you know, if, if, if everybody was nervous, if I was nervous or mm -hmm. the person wasn't, you know, didn't have, you know, much personality that was interviewing me and it was really stressful. As soon as they saw that on my resume, you worked for Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Tell me what he was like. Was he really like that? And, you know, so then that always lightened up any interview and I had all kinds of stories to tell them. So it was, it was a wonderful thing to have my, my resume for years and years. Well, that's incredible. Yeah. It's like we have to. End, I think we have to end on the Mr. Rogers story. I mean, you can't get any better than that. So, oh, he's a great guy. Oh, but thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. We know you're busy, but we really appreciate you taking the time out. Sure. Great to see you, Courtney. You too. And uh, stay safe, and hope to see you in person soon. Okay. You too. Honey. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Good.